and I'll see your 336, and I'll raise you 10,000, you fucking crotch pocket. All right, well, before we get started here, just a quick disclaimer. You know, a lot of things can cause a suspension clunk, you know what I'm saying? And while this will cover, you know, one possible fix, which is actually the most common, there are many things that can cause this. I mean, a lot of things can cause a clunking over bumps. Control arm bushings, ball joints, um, steering rack bushings, tie rods, even wheel bearings, you know what I'm saying? Really, there's no way that one video can be a one-size-fits-all for clunking over bumps, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather say this on the front side so you guys know what you're getting, you know what I mean? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I fucking hate noises, whether it's clunks, creaks, squeaks, I fucking hate it, you know what I mean? My trailblazer's been clunking for a while, and it's really time to fix this shit, because it's driving me crazy. Now, we could just put this thing up in the air and start shaking it down, seeing if we've got anything obviously loose, but I don't want to do that. I want to show you guys more of the process. We can have a spot that we can go, and we can hit a bump or something, and get it to do it every time, because that's going to be critical to helping, you know, narrow down the potential cause. Now, right here at my work, we got this nice little drop-off on the concrete right here. And it seems like whenever I hit this, I can hear this, this noise, you know what I mean? So any kind of uneven surface or whatever where you got, you know, plenty of room to drive around works really good. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to hear this, but just listen real still. hear it and honestly from where I'm sitting I can hear it up in the left front area Let's try it again here actually that time it sounded like it was coming from the right front so now we have a place that we can go where we know without doubt we can make that noise happen you know what i'm saying so whether we're doing a process of elimination or we try some repairs we know we can go right back to the spot to make it happen again you know it's not really a big deal when it's your own car but when you're doing this for somebody else it's kind of important that you verify that you fix the noise because well that's what they're paying you to do you know what i mean now another thing that happened out there was we were able to go over the bump slow enough that we could determine that it was when the front wheels hit the bump or the rear wheels hit the bump. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to isolate the noise from the front suspension to the rear suspension. You know what I mean? In this case, whenever those front wheels drop down that little bump, we heard the clunking noise. So we've isolated it to the front of the truck. Now you could actually go one step further than that. You know, where I used to work, it was right next to a neighborhood that had all these weird speed bumps in it, and the speed bumps didn't actually reach all the way to, I guess, the, the, the curb, you know what I'm saying? There was like a nice flat spot. So what you could do technically was, you know, drive the right side of the truck in the flat spot and have the left side of the truck hit the bump, you know what I mean? The, the speed bump. And if you were a little bit brave, you could go over to the other side of the road when nobody's around, obviously you gotta be safe or whatever, have the left wheels go over the flat spot, and the right wheels hit the bump. And that would give you even further isolation to say, hey, it's doing it whenever the left front, you know, hits a bump, you know what I mean? While I was doing that test out there, sometimes it sounded like it was coming from the left front, sometimes it sounded like it was coming from the right front. So it is very possible that I have an issue on both sides of the front suspension, you know what I mean? Now, since I know a little bit about these trucks, well, really particularly mine, um, I can kind of roll with statistics of where I start. The most common things that I see, at least on these trucks, are ball joints, sway bar links, and sway bar bushings for the sources of front suspension clunks. Again, there can be a host of other issues, but that's what I want to focus on first. Again, just rolling with statistics, you know what I mean? Now, the problem with testing ball joint play or play in the end links is they have to be under a load, meaning the weight of the truck has to be on them, you know, to, to really test for any slop or whatever. So we're looking at this from up underneath the front bumper. You can see our axle shaft right there and this big bar, which is the sway bar. And that little turd is what's called a sway bar link. So again, the suspension is loaded down with the weight of the truck. Just going to grab the sway bar. You should be able to hear this. Let's go shake down the other side. Oh 
yeah, that thing's just destroyed. Let's just say they weren't obviously loose like they are now. You could actually just take a take a pry bar. You can use the pry bar to kind of feel for play. You know what I'm saying? Although we know that the links have a lot of slop in them, and they very well could be a the only source of the noise. Still want to kind of check the ball joints too. The ball joints are these turds right here. And we have to test it under load. The way to really put a load on the ball joints is to have like a jack underneath this lower control arm. Now, while I'm using my lift to get the truck up high enough to get that jack stand underneath that control arm, it would be exactly the same if you were in the driveway. You know what I mean? You could use your floor jack to lift up the truck really high, slide your little jack stand underneath the control arm, and then lower your floor jack back down and again that'll put a load on the ball joints so nothing crazy just got my jack stand underneath that lower control arm i'm still up high enough that this uh, right front wheel is totally off the ground let's take mr pry bar here so there's my pry bar So see, I still got a little bit of a, of a looseness in here. I don't know if you can hear it that good. In cases like this, sometimes it's good to have somebody there operating the pry bar. What I do is just I, I just grab the ball joint, you know what I'm saying, as best as I can. And I kind of feel in it if it's got any slop while the tire is going through its motion. Now what I felt when I was pushing on the pry bar, while I was holding the lower ball joint on the inside, I can actually feel the joint kind of just kind of do one of these. So I've definitely got play in this um, right front lower ball joint. I'm going to go ahead and check the other side. Just wash, rinse, repeat. Now, with, the, with no weight on the suspension, that's when you can kind of do one of these things, you know what I mean? Just grab both sides of the tire, kind of go side to side, and that will, that will, bruh. That's usually used for checking for uh, play in the steering, you know what I mean, whether you've got a tie rod issue or whatever. Do the same thing on the other side. She's pretty tight. I mean, since we're here and we're kind of just doing a general check over anyway, we can check some other stuff too. You could also check to see if these lower control arm bracket bolts are loose because the torque spec on them is like, something crazy like 180 foot pounds and they've been known to um, loosen up over time a lot of slop in that bushing right there well this was kind of unexpected you know what I mean I knew I had a clunking noise I had an idea that the, the sway bar links were shot but I've also got looseness in other areas, you know what I mean? Especially that right lower ball joint, um, definitely got some play in it. So, you know, what I want to do is I want to just keep going with what the intention of this video was to do. Let's just say that we got that far and there was no problem found, you know what I mean? What I do is I disconnect the sway bar from the vehicle. Now there's a couple different ways you can go about doing it. In some vehicles, you can just disconnect the link from the stabilizer bar and like tie strap it to something. On these it's a little bit different since they're such shorties right here. The way I do them is just to take them off. The only bitch is, is that if you have the original end links on it, they can be a motherfucker to get off. What happens is, you're supposed to hold this little hex head with, um, you know, like an Allen wrench or something like that, and then loosen up the bolt. But over time on the OEMs, that motherfucker gets rounded off inside and there's no real way to grip it, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times you got to take like a cutting wheel or even a sawzall. Um, there's a lot of different methods to get these broken off. And in the process though, you end up breaking the links. Um, that's, that's a pretty big problem, not just on trailblazers, but on you know most vehicles in general. So you kind of got to more or less just sacrifice the links to continue on with your diagnosis, which is pretty much what I had planned here. Now on mine, even though that these links have already been replaced, I mean, it's just a, uh, they're just disposable items in my opinion. 
Uh, these are not the originals on this. And you can tell that these aren't the originals on my Trailblazer because they have grease fittings on them. The OEMs were a sealed unit. There are some aftermarkets that are sealed too, but for the most part, most aftermarkets do have a grease fitting. Like I said, I'm, I'm prepared to sacrifice the end links to continue on with the diagnosis here. Let's go ahead and disconnect the sway bar. Um, that way we're going to isolate the links as the problem. So my aftermarket links, it's a six millimeter hex, fits into that shaft right there. Now if you don't have a super long ratcheting 18 millimeter, you can use the two wrench method. See, just like that, <laughs> just like that, he's rounded off. Like I said, these are aftermarket um, end links, so they were actually pretty smart. They put some flats back there that you can grab onto. But if you had OEMs, you wouldn't have these flats here. That's where you'd either have to cut this bitch off with a sawzall, or even just cut the nut down with a Dremel and smash it off with a hammer or something like that. Ooh, ooh, she's a little warm. Ooh. Shit. Oh, look at this. I haven't seen that much play in a hole in about 17 years. We'll get to that later. By taking those links off, our, our bars kind of just flop doodling around here. And it's not going to be cool out on a road test. You know, in some cases, what I do is just take some mechanics wire and uh, wrap it around the sway bar, tie it up to the frame, uh, keep it kind of like where it would normally sit so that way it doesn't rub up on anything. But we are kind of lucky because my Trailblazer is a 2003 and they had the front sway bar, you know, up front like this. So, really, to get this sway bar totally off, we've got two fasteners on each of these brackets right here. So I think for this, it's just going to be easier for me just to go ahead and take these bolts out, get the whole, you know, sway bar off of it, and then go back for a rod. So let's get this thing off of here. Yeah, at least on my 2003, these are 15 millimeter bolts. Well, that sway bar was heavier than I thought it would be. So here's a look at our front sway bar. Like you saw, on each side of the sway bar, you have your end links. They're not supposed to be like this. So this threaded portion goes through the sway bar. And this is the nut on the back of the aftermarket link right here. If you have a high mileage trailblazer, there's a pretty damn good chance that the links that are in it are aftermarket. Now, I'll spare you guys any kind of safety lecture or any of that shit. But just understand that you may notice a little bit of difference in handling, you know what I mean, running without the sway bar on it. Some guys on the forum don't even run the sway bar anymore, you know what I mean? Alright, so we're back up at the spot. No more clunk noise. So if you think about this, what we did was, we eliminated the sway bar links and the sway bar bushings as potential suspects, you know, by pulling the whole sway bar off. We went back to the spot where we knew we could duplicate the noise and the noise is gone. You know, now on a little side note, you know, I know I got play in that right front lower ball joint and I didn't get any kind of clunking noise out there. Well, I said earlier that, you know, the sway bar links and bushings are usually the number one and number two offenders. Right behind them is lower ball joints, you know what I mean? So 
Well, I know I got a ball joint problem. We're going to take care of that later. You know, I mean, we're just going to stick with the script of what we were going to do today. We're going to go ahead, get back on the lift, put the new end links on, new sway bar bushings, and we'll just go from there. Let's just go ahead and pop these links off of this uh, sway bar. Just going to wedge my 17 down in there like that. Come on the back side with an 18. Hey, stop there. Now here we have the number two offender, believe it or not. This piece right here is a sway bar bushing. Pop this cover off. And if you look at this thing, I mean, it looks okay, right? Well, I'm gonna take a socket. It's pretty close to its size. I don't know if you can see that. But there's just a little bit of, of uh, out of roundness in this bushing right here. What really happens is over time with that sway bar flopping around, it kind of turns this circle into almost like an egg shape. You know what I mean? And that can also give you a clunking. Now apparently in 03 they made two different size front sway bars. And as to telling the difference, I really don't know, you know what I mean? So it said your the diameter of your sway bar could be 1.73 or 1.81. Now way back, I mean a way, way, way back, I asked the guys on uh, GMT Nation about this. A user by the name of RMSG0040 had a little tech tip for this. On these OEM bushings, they actually have the millimeter size, you know, stamped on the casing of this. On this one, 44 millimeter. Comes back pretty close to a 1.73 inch uh, sway bar. So big shout outs to um, RMSG0040 for that tip. Put like a uh, micrometer on it. Came back with pretty close to 1.73 inches for the, for the size of the sway bar. And the only other tip I would have is just to buy both of them and just take back the ones you don't need. I went with the AC Delco sway bar bushings. Not really for any particular reason. I think they were actually the best price ever on um, Croc Auto. And you see on these, they don't have the size stamped on it like the OEMs did. Mm. Now, I could go and just start the new links on here, but I'm not going to. And the reason is, is because most of the time, if you're just going to put end links on this thing, you're going to leave the sway bar in the truck. You know what I mean? So it'd be better just to show it from a way where, you know, you're not going to worry about replacing the sway bar bushings. You just want to do like a link swap. And I think it'd be better just to show it that way, since that is the, the, the most common way to do it. You know what I mean? So I didn't go crazy tightening these up just yet. My personal preference is to get everything kind of started and then come back and tighten everything up. So I'm so going to leave the sway bar to frame bolts loose, put the links on, and then come back and tighten everything up. You know what I mean? Uh, these are the links I'm using this time. These are made by Mog or something. Moog. Mog. These were cool because they came with new nuts. Looks like there's no thread locker in these, so we might have to add our own. Come with these little fittings. Oh, it also came with some directions. Let's see. Guide the installation de raccord de barra stabilisateurs. Whatever that means. Did they give us pictures or anything? Mr. Seven. Get him started. Same thing here. Just get him started. As you can tell on our aftermarket links, they've got nuts on the back side here. A problem that I've run into a lot is when you get these things installed, your your grease gun won't be able to pump any grease into these. And that kind of sucks. 
I mean, I've got a couple different attachments for my grease gun, but from a do-it-yourself point of view, most people won't even have that. Hell, most people won't even have a fucking grease gun. So I just kind of, I guess, pre-grease them, if that makes sense. Just not much. Maybe three pumps. Oh, all you want to do is just keep pumping it full of grease until grease comes out the boot. No. Is that three, four pumps? No big deal. Oh, that's cool. I'll be able to use this stuff. Kind of got burned on some labor, so I got stuck with a bunch of parts I don't need. So at least I'll get some use out of this stuff. Little finagling. I'll do the same on the other side. But I'm not going to show it because what's the point? So I'm just going to take some thread locker and on like the very last half inch of the bolt, I'll just rub some thread locker around that. I really don't need the whole bolt covered in it. Just really where the uh, nut's going to lock down. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Just going to hold that. What are you still doing in there? Oh, Mr. Anderson. So I've got the end links, not 100% tight, but pretty damn close. But now I'm going to come back and tighten up the sway bar all the way. The torque spec for the sway bar bushing bolts is 41 foot pounds. The torque spec for the sway bar link bolts or nuts, whatever you want to call it, is 74 foot pounds. But I want to show you something. That's 74 foot pounds, okay? I can still get much more out of that bolt. I don't think that torque spec's 100% accurate. This has come back to bite a lot of people, including myself, where you know you follow the specs and you think you got it good and tight. Maybe one or two days driving it, and you still you get a little clunking noise coming back, and you've got to come back and tighten these up again. And you know, based on my own experience with this, I just tell people. Tighten it up as hard as you can. You know what I'm saying? And here we are back at the spot where we know we can duplicate the clunking noise. Now I know you hear like my keys and shit flopping around. Now it might be hard to tell based on that, but our clunking noise is gone. So as you've seen right there, being able to just go back and verify that, you know, the noise is gone is awesome because it might not apply to what we're doing here on this channel, but when it comes to like my real life, I have to like verify that the repair has been made. I can't just, you know, say, hey, I had play in the sway bar links. I put links on. Here you go. I got to make sure it's right because, you know, my name's on this repair. And that's why, to me, it's, in, it's important to, to verify that the repair has been made. You know what I mean? And that just ties back into being able to consistently duplicate the noise. That's why, actually, that's really the whole purpose of this video, believe it or not. Because I think there's already videos for just changing parts on this front suspension. Whatever, who cares about that crap? Now, I will say this. Even though I put Loctite on them uh, sway bar link bolts, after I start driving this truck again, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to make sure that they're super, super tight still, like I said. I mean, this isn't some bullshit. I mean, people have actually called me on the phone. Hey, I had this clunking noise. I put new links on. About a week later, the noise came back. And I'm like, well, just check your link nuts again. And it's, uh, it can't be that. It can be that. You know what I mean? That's why, like, on this, you know, you saw when I put the torque wrench on at 74 foot-pounds, 
I was still able to come back and get a little bit more, you know, oomph onto those um, sway bar link nuts. Like I said, in my opinion, you know, these links are just disposable items. Um, people on the forums have tried, you know, just about every manufacturer out there, and there's really not one that stands out above the rest. You know what I mean? So, in my opinion, I don't think there ever will be, you know, one that's, you know, so well built that it can withstand whatever sway bar links withstand. Like I said, my Trailblazer's got 185 on it and this is the third set of links that's been on it. I've let these links go for a little while because I've had other more important things to take care of like my system and making cool headlights or whatever. I had a little blunder and ended up having to put lower control arms on this thing right around 100,000 miles. Um, the donor vehicle it came out of had like 27,000 miles on it. So really technically if you think about the ball joints on this truck or the lower ball joints at least, they're right around 110,000 miles and I'm not surprised that it needs them, you know what I mean? Because at 180, they both probably would have already had to been replaced by now, you know, if I still had the OEM, you know, lower ball joints on this thing. It very well could have still have had a clunking noise, which, like I said, I was surprised that that right front isn't making any noise, but whatever. Cars suck. Trucks suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe to my shit, you know what I mean? Um, but after the crickets, there's more. Hang on. Yeah, this thing right here goes out to a certain someone. I just wanted to say that um, I was doing some sway bar links on my Trailblazer here today, and um, there was a lot of slop in one of them end link joints, and it just made me think of you. People run their fucking mouth, and they have no idea what they're talking about. You know, it's like they have no fucking clue. It's just basically, you know, just assumptions and, 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 and guesses, you know what I mean? Yeah, I went and found your Facebook account. You know what I mean? I seen that super awesome picture of you standing outside with your pride and joy, you know what I'm saying? You know, 17 years later, the best you can do with your life is buy a Kia Sereno, you know what I'm saying? 17 years and that, that's all you have to show for your whole life is a, is a fucking Kia Sorento. I did the math, if you bought that thing for 17 grand and it took you 17 years, you know what I'm saying? Well, there's a good chance them kids that live off of 30 cents a day are doing better than you, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, you look pretty good standing next to that thing. Looks like you lost a lot of weight, which is actually pretty good considering you pumped out what? Four kids? You look good. I'm a little bit of a fat boy myself nowadays, and I mean, I, I really considered, you know, using meth to kind of, you know, help cut back on my weight a little bit, but, but then I looked up at your face and I realized those faces of meth pictures were real, you skeleton looking motherfucker. I mean, it's pretty easy to impress the young and gullible, you know what I mean? Like when you work at Chili's and you go back and your job is to like heat up the marinara sauce, that doesn't mean you're a fucking chef, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're heating up marinara sauce, you're a server, you know what I mean? head chef the fuck out of here. You know, you're the type of motherfucker that would work at the Apple store and go and tell all your peoples, I work for Apple, I help develop iOS 8. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck out of here, you lying sack of shit. I mean, <laughs> you're so fucking stupid. <laughs> Check this out. This fucking girl, me and this girl lived in this apartment, and I went to take a piss, and there was a huge shit left in the toilet. Now, me and her are the only ones that have been there for the past couple days. And she's going to try to tell me that somebody broke into the house and took a shit. Like, seriously. <laughs> you are the worst. You are the worst fucking liar on the face of the fucking planet. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. This doesn't just apply to you, but it applies to a lot of motherfuckers. Let me tell you something. If, if my son had a developmental issue, I would not tell anybody. You know what I mean? That's his business. I'm not gonna go and put him on a fucking pedestal. You're like the fucking monkey in The Lion King who held up fucking Simba. My son has... Is that how you're getting your sponsors? Is that how you're getting a handout? You still have fucking sob stories 17 years later with a bunch of made up shit. Fuck you and, f and as for your little fuck stick, you're a fucking joke, you know what I mean? You're, you are nowhere, anywhere remotely close to the fucking hood. The closest you've been to the hood is the time you watched the episode of Fresh Prince where Carlton stayed at Jazz's apartment. Get the fuck out of here. It's time just to let go. I wish I could understand why you guys still have a hard on for me to this very day, but you know, mental illness is a, is a big problem in the United States right now. You know what I mean? Hopefully, you know, advances in uh, medical science can, um, can take care of that. You know what I mean? Fuck out of here.